بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين والآكبة لأهل التقوى واليقين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى سلوات Respected brothers and sisters in Iman with the permission of Samah to Sayyid Murkhustak there was once a great ayatollah in the land of Najaf this ayatollah was so great the way his friends described him he was the most noble man they had met this ayatollah one day he says I go to the ziyarat of Aba Abdullah al Hussain and I see he sees I went to the ziyarat of Imam Hussain he sees a man the man grabs the zari of Imam Hussain and he says assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah and from the grave an answer comes wa alaykum assalam ya Abdullah this scholar says I have been coming here every Thursday I never miss the ziyarat who is this pious man I am an ayatollah and I have been coming here for 40 or 50 plus years and I never get the answer who is this pious man so the ayatollah waits this man the other man finishes his supplications and then he leaves when he leaves the ayatollah follows him He's following him and then he stops the man. And he says, O oh, pious man, who are you? And what have you done? What investment have you done that our third imam is answering you? This man started crying. He started weeping. He said, I am a sinful man. I didn't do anything great. He says, the thing is, when my mom was ill, the doctors told her, it's your last time you only have few months to live and you are going to pass on she had one wish and the wish was I want to go to ziyarat of Abba Abdullah and at, <clears throat> and at that time my income status wasn't that great I didn't have enough money to take her so my mother says my mother told me oh son carry me on your shoulders and when I get there I will ask Abba Abdullah to answer your salam whenever you get there so with the intention that Abba Abdullah calls us every year let's say salam to Abba Abdullah and his companions Assalamu ala al Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al Assalamu ala al Hussein. Wa ala awlad al Hussein. Wa ala ashab al with the loudest of the voices assalamu wa ala wa ala aula wa ala first let me thank the almighty the all knowing the providers the sustainers we do this every night as I say on a nightly basis we could have been anywhere in the world you could have gone to any event in the world but Alhamdulillah Allah gave us the tawfiq 
that we are here and we are commemorating the days of Abu Abdullah and his companions. With that said, I will leave my topic, the topic we had, but today I would like to discuss something else. In the time when Islamophobia is at the peak, in this crucial time, when Islamophobia is at the peak and where it seems like every single government, every single religion, wherever you go, every TV channel, every social media, is trying to attack Islam, wouldn't it be safer for us to stay in our homes and do the Majlis Hussain? Wouldn't it be safer if we stayed in the Azakhanas and not go out in the streets? So why is it that we go out in the streets and we do the procession or we do the Jalus e It's to show to the world that we are the people of peace. It's to show to the world that the first act of terrorism was created and it was acted upon Yazid. May Allah curse him. So by going out, we are giving this message to the people that we are the people of peace. Terrorism can be anybody, it could be anywhere in the world, but Muslims cannot be terrorists. We could have done this alone. Me and you, we could have gone alone. But why is it that we take our families? Why is it that we take our sisters? Why is it that we take our mothers? Why is it that we take our infants? You have to look from a third point of view. If you look at it from a third point of view, imagine for a second that you're not Shia, you're somebody else. You're in Manhattan, you're doing whatever you want, and you see thousands of people, they're wearing black. They have their own flags. They have their infant babies with them. They're giving out free food. You will think to yourself, what's going on? When you see this, you see them beating their chest. You'll be like, what's going on? I was just here on a stroll. I just came out to shop. What is this going on? When that happens to that person, when he sees them beating themselves, he will go and ask. And this is the second point of the pro procession, the jalous is tabligh. This is the way that we do tabligh. When that person starts and asks what is going on, that's when the tabligh starts. That's when you tell them, oh, this is the grandson of Prophet. And that's when you tell them, we are the believers of Ja'far al-Sadiq Ali Muhammad. So the first thing was that Muslims are not terrorists. And the second thing was this is a way of tabligh. Ayatollah Khomeini said whenever a person doing the latmiya, he hits his chest, he's not hitting his chest. It's a slap on Yazid's face. So we are telling the world that we are against <coughs> oppression. Wherever it is, it might be in Yemen or Lebanon or Pakistan or wherever it is, we are telling the world and we are giving them this message that the Shias of Ja'far al Sadiq and the Shias of Imam Hussein they are against oppression. But while doing this, what tends to happen is we tend to get imbalanced. As we do this, we tend to get imbalanced. Why didn't you read Fajr today? Because I was busy making the niyaz for the Jalus. Yes, for our sisters that cry for Lady Zainab for the way she was tortured, for the way her hijab was ripped off, not by hand but by spear, for our sisters to go out in the cities of Manhattan without a hijab, does it make sense? No, but we see it and we must correct it, brothers and sisters. Yes, I don't want to keep you guys old. I know you guys are tired and I'm tired as well. Just a few lines because tonight is the night of Qasim. I'll just say one line. Before Ashur, it was the night of Ashur. Abu al-Fadl is sitting and Ali Akbar, they're both sitting and they're arguing. Abbas says, I will go first. Ali Akbar says, no, I will go first. 
Then Abbas says, if the teachers, if a teacher is there, the student never goes. And then Ali Akbar replies, if the students are there, the teachers never go. And then Abbas says, Ali Akbar, if you go, your father's back will be broken. And Abbas, Ali Akbar says, oh uncle, if you go, the back of my father will be broken. And Qasim is listening to all of this. And then Qasim comes up and he says, neither will you go, Abbas. Neither will you go, Akbar. I will go because I am the orphan of Hassan. Imam Hussein is listening to this. Imam Hussein comes. He hugs Qasim and he says, Oh Qasim, you are the last sign of my brother Hassan Mujtaba. Wama alayna illa al-balaq.